kick. And then thank you. Welcome everyone to Super Tuesday. It's presented by Boost Mobile. They may not be the best team in the country, but nobody's playing better than Kentucky. January 19th, the win over a ranked Auburn team. Three nights later, a win over a ranked Mississippi State team. And then the statement came this weekend against Kansas. They win 71-63. The Wildcats are rolling, and now they are in Vanderbilt, where last week Vanderbilt hosted the number one team in the country. Winless in conference, they took the balls to overtime. They lost five in the belief right now, can we really take down the number one team? They're hitting their shots down the stretch. Upgraded to an F1, a huge call. And it rolls in to tie the game, we'll go to overtime. Blocked at the rim, what a play! Spin move, baseline. Tennessee will survive. Tennessee picked up a convincing win tonight. And we'll have more on that on the halftime report coming up. Jimmy Dykes, Chris Budden, I'm Carl Ravitch. Welcome everyone to Memorial Gymnasium. We are underway and Kentucky controls the basketball. So if you're Bryce Drew and Vanderbilt, can you get your guys to believe one more time they can take down a top 10 team? Because the belief was there last Wednesday when you and I were in the building. Sure it was. Then they kind of laid an egg on Saturday. That's P.J. Washington's first shot. No good. They crashed the offensive glass. Never went out. And that one did on the sideline. So Bryce Drew pregame. And he gave great speeches against Tennessee. Here's what he said before this one. When we go through this door and we go 12 strong, once one guy walks through, 11 are running after him. When we go on the court and one guy runs back on defense, there's four guys running after him. We are one unit tonight. We are one strong unit. We win this game by winning for the guy next to you. You can see, too, in the background, all those white papers with inspirational messages on them. Yeah, I was into this afternoon with he and his team, and. All those words were about toughness and effort and accountability and doing everything he can to motivate a team right now that is winless in the SEC. All right, both teams struggle early. Each team's taken a couple of shots and both have missed them. And now Ashton Hagens pushes. And Hagens has been really the superstar of this team. Both these teams lost point guards for different reasons. Quad A Green, he left Kentucky, transferred. Darius Garland just withdrew from school with a knee injury so he could prepare for the NBA draft. And the impact on both teams has been the polar opposite. Kentucky has sort of come together, while Vanderbilt hasn't. As a program-changing kid, Darius Garland, and a season-changing injury when he went down. Contact out top, no foul call. Does Simi Shitu had the ball? Saban Lee will fire. That'll find the bottom of the net. And that's a three. And he opens up offensively in that same elbow series that we watched Tennessee struggle with on Wednesday evening last week. Showed you the ranked victories. Overall, Kentucky's won six in a row. Their defense has been outstanding. And they have won nine of their last ten. The game of checkers to start the game. Defensively, Vanderbilt opens up man-to-man. -man. They played 36 minutes of zone against Kentucky and Rupp and really disrupted their offensive rhythm with it. Keldon Johnson way off. We'll see if we can what kind of impact that victory over Kansas and combine the three wins we talked about at the top have cumulatively on Kentucky. Ryan in and out. Good three-point shooter. Transfer out of Syracuse University. Not from Notre Dame, I should say. They double three travel. This looked like a travel. Instead, a layup at the other end for P.J. Washington. You see the defensive game plan by Vanderbilt right off the bat. On any touch by Reed Travis, and I expect P.J. Washington the same thing. The hard, fast, conviction double team get that ball off the box. It's not an easy offense to defend. Those elbow touches and so many actions off of them, Ravi. Very difficult for Kentucky. Saban Lee will get the foul, and he'll go to the free-throw line. Chris Budden's joining us. Say, Chris. 
Hey, you mentioned the confidence this Vanderbilt team played with a week ago against Tennessee, but then went to go play Oklahoma and didn't play with that same chemistry. Aaron Niesmith told me today that he didn't know where that came from, that honestly they played well the first 10 minutes and then were just flat the rest of the time. He said part of that was on me. My knee was not at 100% after banging it in that Tennessee game. He said he's feeling much better. He also says there's been a big change in practice the last two days, a lot more energy, a lot more chemistry between the teammates. Yeah, I mean, look, they're 0-6 in conference to me, and ultimately you have games like Tennessee, like Kentucky, which are season, if not saving, those are what you're now playing for. Yeah, absolutely, and it's a, you know, every, every game's a one-game season in the eyes of a head coach. And I love this Neesmith kid. I think he's got the character, the toughness, the work ethic, the talent to be a terrific building piece for Bryce Drew. His program going forward. Hot third hero, what a shot. He, in traffic. He is a baller. I'm telling you right now, if, if we say, let's play shirts and skins for the next two hours, he would be my number one pick out of everyone in the building. That dude is a baller. Who would be your second pick? I had first. Uh, PJ. That's a good call, yeah. Johnny Wetzel, two big bodies banging there. He kicks it to Neesmith. His first shot of the night rattles in and out. And a couple have gone halfway down and then come back out. Hagen's the pull-up, no good, and the uh, defensive rebound to Vanderbilt. Good push, though, by Hagen's to get that ball to the elbow within the first four seconds of the possession. There's a steal. Washington all the way to the bucket. He lays it up and lays it in. His play has continued to get better and better this season. Yeah, back-to-back 20-point -back games. He actually handled a bad pass that time. Hero in transition through it at knee level. A really good soft set of paws by Washington to control it. Early pace favor either team. Okay, Kentucky wants to get the thing going back and forth. And at Vanderbilt, that's not how they're built, not right now, without Darius Garland for the rest of the season. Back door inside pass to Wetzel, who uses his left to get it up and get it in. Yanni Wetzel, the 6'10, 235 pounder. Grab it's not easy for him against traffic. I talked about it last week. He has short arms for a kid 6'11, but that time the quickness off the floor offset. The lack of length. Hero off the not a great game, but the offensive rebound for P.J. Washington. If you don't box off Kentucky, you don't win the game. They're one of the top five teams in the country right now at offensive rebound percentage. Washington, Reed, Travis, those guys are monsters when the ball's on the glass. First meeting between these two teams was pretty close. You could argue one of the biggest differences was the rebounding. Kentucky out rebounded him 38 21 and had 12 offensive rebounds in the first meeting. Double comes quick. Hero will launch a three. You notice anything with the stroke? He's been off lately. No, oh, it's a. Uh, he's shooting it with conviction. He's shooting it quick. Did a good job of getting in the slot. This is trouble for Vanderbilt. Hero the run out and he gets that to go. No foul. We'll get a timeout for Vanderbilt. A lot of Wildcat fans in the house. Coach Calipari, he's got a team of stars. He'll talk about one of them, P.J. Washington, when we come back. This is the SEC on ESPN. P.J. Washington, a dominant player right now. Back-to-back 20-point -back games. He's only made five threes, however, in the last eight games. Don't overreact to him at the three-point line. He is a left-block, left-shoulder monster right now. His drive-assist ratio, he drives nine times. He only gets an assist one time off of it. He's driving to score. That six-foot jump hook is money. Push him off. P.J. Washington, hard to guard. Hard to guard and getting a lot of confidence recently after those back-to-back 20-plus -back point games. Part of that is because of how John Calipari has pushed him. He wanted him to play less tentative, more aggressive, which has resulted in the confidence for Washington. He said the last element of his game that Calipari has really been pressing on him is to play more physical in the second half, that Washington sometimes has kind of a, a flat demeanor in the second half. He said, I want you to continue to play with that same kind of intensity. All right, KB, thank you. 12-7 here, and he's responsible for a half dozen of those 12. Take a look at the Indeed player resume for P.J. against Mississippi State and Kansas. Those are the back-to-back 20-plus -back and a pretty good shooting percentage. The 13 rebound stands out. And a little later, you'll hear Cal, I think, in jest, says, why aren't you getting 35 and 20 every night? 
Out of the break, the three-pointer goes for Neesmith. Guys, at practice about a month ago when John Calipari told P.J., do you want to be a dominant college basketball player or just a pretty good one? And if you want to be a dominant player, these are the things you need to start doing on a nightly basis. And P.J. right now playing as well as anybody at that 3-4 position in college ball. What a pass. Nick Richards with the basket and the foul. And you're starting to see this Kentucky team develop a four-headed monster down low with Washington. You see Nick Richards here, Reed Travis, and when E.J. Montgomery comes in, that's 20 fouls and a whole bunch of size and skill. Ravi, they, they punked Kansas in the paint in that game Saturday night. And their interior passing is terrific. They throw through double teams as much as they throw over them. I know they have a couple of guys that are 6'11", but those are powerful kids that just eat up and power through a, a double team with those interior passes. And I tell you what, those are big hands on Nick Richards. Yes, they are. You found that out today, right? I'll show you that Huge. a little later on. Huge hands. Look at Kentucky pushing that elbow touch out about another four or five feet. That is critical to push it out. Levon Brown, 15 into the game for Vanderbilt. Almost feels like they got to make their shots every time down the floor. We're going to get a foul, and that's a push from behind on Joe Toy. Vanderbilt got the switch that they wanted with Saban Lee up top, but a good job defensively by the bigs to not give ground and keep their heels right on that three-point line. Manuel quickly, the second point guard on the team, comes in. Hagens goes out. Johnson's, Johnson's on the bench, getting a little rest as well. I think the sub comes in now because Vanderbilt goes zone. And Hagens is not a three-point shooter where quickly, yesterday in practice, made 73s in a five-minute drill. He was clipping them off about one every four seconds. Number five in blue, Calipari wants as a shooter. Hero access denied at the rim. Good block there by Brown. Ball back to Kentucky, and P.J. Washington has eight early points. Left block, left shoulder. That is money for P.J. Washington. Seven-point lead, largest of the night for Kentucky. As you see Keldon Johnson step to the scorer's table, he's going to come back in. And a foul on Vanderbilt. Tyler Hero drove that last ball right down the slot, right down the seam, and got chewed up by the block shot and then the save right to P.J. Washington. Not much defense on him, but again, he is money turning to his left shoulder and using that right paw about that six-foot jump mark. Kentucky has dominated the paint in their recent victories. They're doing it again tonight. You see that 14 points in the paint as Johnson misses and a rebound margin of plus three. So we'll keep an eye on those two numbers over the course of this game. Vanderbilt so many times in that Tennessee game in which they took the Vols to overtime scored with about five seconds or less on the shot clock. They're in that situation again as Toy drives went to throw it down. It's going to be a shot clock violation. As the ball rolls towards us, we take a timeout. Good start for Kentucky, something they've improved on after some slow starts to start the season. They lead by seven. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Boost Mobile. Boost makes it easy to switch. Switching makes it easy to save. And Advil. You'll ask, what pay with Advil? Welcome back to Nashville. On this, on this floor, not only do players have to play well, the head coach has to have a good game as well. John Calipari can come to the 38-foot mark to get closer to his guys here in the first half on that end of the floor. The problem is now he's about 38, 40 feet away from his bench. Five, six, maybe ten times a game as a head coach. You're relying on your assistants to say, Coach, get him out of the game. Foul trouble. Coach, we have a matchup. Change your out-of-bounds plays. The head coach in this configuration, you have to have a good night. Have some communication with your bench, but John Calipari's got to call a good game. Ravi? All right, J.D. wants to be closer to his players. Take a look at Rick Barnes when Tennessee was here last week. You can see how he roams just so he can communicate with his players. And he's roughly 31 feet away from his bench, in a sense, letting the assistant coaches know my priority is to be near my players. That all changed in 2015 and 16, Chris. Used to be the coaches couldn't roam the sidelines. That was the year they decided to change it. 
Well, he really likes the change. I know you, you have the issue of you can't talk to your assistant coaches, but with the young players that he has, the ability to communicate, and he said, well, you guys don't realize also is this place is always packed when we're here. So if I'm down on the baseline, my guys can't hear me at all with the fans in this place. Big Barn, 67 years old. It was uh, built in 1952, and it is one of the more unique venues in all of college basketball. You know, Ravi, I, I learned that when I was here twice as a head coach, and you just completely are disengaged from your assistant coaches. And it might only be five or six times a game, but it's amazing how much information you're processing in the one minute as a head coach and how five or six times a game that assistant will bail you out. So the head coach just has to think a little different tonight. Right. See, he's moved back towards his bench. Hagan's going to come in. Looks like Baker's going to come out after the foul he committed. Like out-of-bounds plays. Let's say the assistant coach normally is the one telling you what out-of-bounds play to run. Well, now tonight, John Calipari on the fly is going to have to be called. Just a, a, just a little different look at, through the eyes of what a head coach goes through here on this floor. Simi Shitu with the ball. Scoreless so far in the early going. That three is off. Rebound. Wow. Out of nowhere comes Cleveland Brown, who's getting more minutes over 20 in the last two games. That'll be a substitution by Kentucky. No box off. Sit down and think about it. Look where Hagens is playing. He's the point guard, but they moved him off the point to let him be a passer from the baseline in the wings. That's such a small thing, but a huge move by John Calipari to take his point guard and let him be a playmaker. No doubt about it. He finds quickly the three-point shooter who knocks it down. Lead is eight. Big Blue Nation is in the house. Thought that Ryan may have gotten away with a walk. Should to look up from behind. Hagens went there to pick it, and it led to some disruption, and the ball will be turned over to Kentucky. Hey, boys and girls, our Women's Thursday Night Showcase this week, number two, UConn. They're in Louisville to take on the third-ranked Cardinals. Huskies have won 17 in a row against the Cardinals. That goes back to 1993. Louisville actually won the first game of this series. Haven't won since. That's Thursday, 7 Eastern ESPN, the ESPN app. You can watch anywhere. But North Carolina taking care of Notre Dame. Yeah, they did. Women the other night. That two versus three matchup. The reason is, number one is Baylor. The first time for Kim Mulkey's squad to be ranked in that top slot in the past six years. She has a heck of a ball club this year. There's your point guard again, trying to make plays off of a position somewhere other than the top. Ravi, that's such a key move for Kentucky in their zone offense. Shitu picks up his first. Take a look at this follow by Cleavon Brown. Yeah, Nick Richards is just in no man's land. He has no awareness where Cleavon Brown is. The shot goes and Richard just ball watches. He's supposed to go hit someone with a gold jersey first, hit fine and fetch, and he didn't do any of the three. So you mentioned Richards didn't block out. Richards comes out of the game. And Calipari's done that. Jim Calhoun used to do that. What do you make of that style where literally mistake made, instinct is you're coming out of the game? Well, first of all, you have to have the depth to do it. Sure. And as you said earlier, Calipari's got 20 fouls to give. He, he, he doesn't care who plays. It's who plays the best and who's doing what you're supposed to do. And that is in Nick Richards' job description every time the ball is shot. Hit a body, go find it for us. But you're good. Zero tolerance policy. Uh, it, it depends on your team, Ravi, I mm -hmm. think, and, and your person as a coach. But his guys respond to that style. That's how sure. he's always been since he's been at Kentucky. He's a low-maintenance, do-what-we-ask-you-to-do type guy, and he has the depth to get away with. Sixth turnover for Vanderbilt. And this game was once tied 10-10 at the 1349 mark. It's a 12-2 run for Kentucky. There's Hagen's penetrating and a good kick to quickly. No good. They're going to call that one on EJ Montgomery. Would you be shocked if I said that Ashton Hagen's is a zone buster? <laughs> because it, no, because it doesn't have to be the guy that makes the shot. No, he, I would he, not. He, yeah, he, you'd have to do a little more than that to he, shock me. He breaks that zone <laughs> down though as a passer and and, and driving gaps. 
I want you over the course of the game to try to come up with something that would be slightly more shocking than Ashton Hagen's zone he's, buster. But he's not a shooter, you know what I'm saying? I hear you. Of course, I got you. <laughs> hey, I'll, I'll, okay, I'll give you one right now. You know we have, we're now approaching almost 11,000 views on our Super Tuesday breakfast. Does that shock you even more? It does me. We, 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 didn't, we didn't have Laura Rutledge with us today. Now, now, Chris is part of our breakfast group. Chris, did you like it this morning with us? Are you saying that I don't bring the page views? No, you do. Yeah, absolutely. If it wasn't for you, it's just re Rabbi and I would have about 734 views. <laughs> <laughs> little biscuit love at National hosted uh, the Super Tuesday crew. Speaking of Twitter love, Duke basketball, 453,000 interactions in the month of January, the most for all college hoops teams. Tennessee, 314,000 interactions, and Kentucky, 266. The power of social media these yeah. days. And the awareness of these programs to get involved with it. I mean, they all have their own internal groups yeah. doing those things. They're, they're entertaining, and they're, uh, they're really a good inside look at the program that you're generally not getting, but these programs are all over it. Nee Smith. Off she two there to help, but no. And doesn't it feel like Vanderbilt almost has to score in every possession? Yes, yes. Keldon Johnson drew some contact. And a chance here to run. Saban Lee can fly. She two was asking for the alley oop, but instead Lee keeps it himself. Nice move. The son of former Florida State NFL running back Ampley. Yeah, we, you and I visited with Ampley. On Wednesday, walking out of the building. That was a terrific move. This kid's got blazing speed, but to kind of downshift and get that speed under control, that was very well done. Hero fires a three. Again, Tyler Hero's outside shooting, which when he's hot, is as good as anybody in the country off tonight. He kind of lifted his head and, and, and got his shoulders fading back on that one. Two of seven from the floor for Tyler Hero. You don't mess around with Hagens, do you? you? You do not run dribble handoffs against Kentucky when Hagens is on the floor. He will blow it up better than anyone else in college ball. Abby Saban lead. Man, that last basket, the push. The speed is the blow-by speed. He just leaves Hagens standing. Now watch right this. Downshift. Well done. Zero in goal. But Dad used to do on the football field, scoring touchdowns. Now we're scoring layups. We're back. Kentucky has done it uh, on both ends, and certainly with their breaks, they haven't really done a lot of outside shooting tonight, Jimmy. No, that's how they're built. That's their DNA, their personality right now, their offensive identity is to pound that thing in the paint. They did it against Kansas on Saturday night. That, that's who they are. And it all starts with those touches for P.J. Washington, and they kind of feed off of those. But that's a kid right there that, again, if he decides he's going to be a dominant player for the next seven or eight weeks, Kentucky could very well find themselves in the Final Four. I didn't think I would say that in November, but they are a legitimate Final Four contender now. Yeah, I agree. One turnover, 14-6 in the paint. How would you answer the question if your coach said to you, you want to be a dominant player or you just want to be a regular player? I would be shocked, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, well, I, I think that's... Uh, that's the magic of Calipari to know how to push the right buttons. She too had that blocked. How about that? Not something that uh, Reed Travis does often. He may have tweaked his shoulder there as he got tied up with she too on the other end. Washington no good, but he'll go to the free throw line. It would make me think about it. Absolutely would make me think about it. Do I want to be a dominant player or just another guy? And is what Kentucky has done this year. You see back there in week six or seven, we were kind of discounting the Kentucky Wildcats, but Rabbi, you and I, the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about how bullish we are with Tennessee. Kentucky's now starting to come, come, come right at their heels. I agree. Yeah, Tennessee with a huge win tonight. Grant Williams is, he's a nerd, but he's a hooping nerd. <laughs> he can flat out ball, man, can he? He's unbelievable. 23-9 yes. and nine tonight. Tell you who showed up tonight for Tennessee. Admiral Schofield went for 24-9 and nine rebounds. They beat... South Carolina 92 to 70 tonight and it seems like Tennessee shoots way more over 50% than they do under yeah. tonight 56% from the floor 21 points off 14 turnovers and look South Carolina only lost one game in conference before Tennessee showed up number one played like number one tonight on the road 
There's a collision there with Hero and Ryan, and both seem hurt. Ryan may have lost his breath. You can see him deep breathing. And that was two guys meeting at the intersection. Just a hard contact can occur in a basketball game. There's no foul there. That's just part of the game sometimes. Get the wind knocked out of you most likely is what happened to Ryan. Back to Grant Williams. The, the two most difficult things to defend in this league right now. Grant Williams with the basketball around the free throw line in the middle part of the floor. And P.J. Washington and Reed Travis on the left block. Our score 24 14 here, NBA Wednesday. The Indiana Pacers, the more you think about Victor Oladipo's injury, the more you realize just how talented that team is. And the fact that they may be able to withstand not having him as great as he is. And how about the Trailblazers? Not Steph, but Seth Curry the other night drops in 22. Here, 27 14. James Harden may go for 30 in one of those two games, and he doesn't even play for any of those teams. <laughs> That's how good he's been lately. Wow. The elbow series is... Kentucky's done a good job of defending. That time Lee got to the basket with a hammer pass, just can't make the shot. And you wonder what the impact of Ryan in that gut shot he took was. He just threw up an air ball for a guy that's really good from the outside. Hagens buries a three, and Kentucky hammering Vanderbilt here. That Memorial Gymnasium now up 30 to 14. Is that his second three-point make in conference play? Big Blue clicking on all cylinders. Carl Ravage, Chris Button, so Ashton Hagens, about a 17% three-point shooter. Coach Calipari has implored him, when you're open, shoot it, man. Well, he has to. If not, defense is just going to sag back off of him, especially when they're in the zone up top. And nothing wrong with the stroke. That's a very good look at it from behind the basket. The ball stayed on the shot side of his body the entire time. The, the elbow was underneath the wrist. Counted about two and a half, three rotations. And if he just gets to a 25, 28% three-point right. shooter, watch out. Where does Vanderbilt get their points from? Start with Wetzel at the top. Five on the shot clock. Joe Toy. Now Wetzel in trouble. Launches one off the iron. And did Hero touch that? He did. That'll be Vanderbilt ball. Or Kentucky defensively. And Cal told us today they probably have another 25, 30% in them defensively in terms of the room for improvement. And if they get to that, this is a young team that uh, could very well be in that Elite Eight game when 40 minutes away from a Final Four berth. Right. I asked Coach Cal earlier today, relative to how your teams gel, usually it's somewhere in February, would you say this group is ahead? And he said, yeah, he actually would say that this group is ahead. He loves the idea that he's got some experience on this team in Washington and having Reed Travis very different than what they're used to. Hero able to turn around and stay in bounds. And he's got somebody in Reed Travis. He could talk about the office and Seinfeld shows that they actually <laughs> Absolutely. both understand. Yeah. Kentucky just a little bit of screening action with Washington up top. Kentucky's not moving enough to know if it's against man or zone. It's against man, but they're standing around like it's zone. Three on the shot clock. Hero pulls up. Floater. Good shot. That's my guy in the Shirts and Skins game. I'm taking Tyler Hero first. He does so much. A man of impact in the SEC for Kentucky going forward. Look out. Hero a throw down, a 12-0 run. And the lead jumps to 20 like that. You know, in pickup games, it's make it, take it, and you, it win or stay. My team's staying. My team's winning with Hero. Kentucky fighting hard on every catch. They are, they are there on the touch. Alert, active. Westbrook in that ball screen up top by Hero. Mm. Into row number three for P.J. Washington. 
all Wildcats. Tyler Hero was two of seven at one point in this game. He's just made two in a row, including the little floater in the lane. And then the steal and the flush. They have won six in a row. Their defense has been dynamite. We are in Nashville, Music City, and we're singing the blues right now on Super Tuesday. <laughs> And I know you keep those sheets that you write those notes down on. I know how you work. During the break, the Vanderbilt women's soccer team, the SEC regular season champions, came out. They threw out some women's soccer t-shirts. I think the soccer goalie punted it into the stands. Dykes was looking for a shirt. Didn't get one. Crickets didn't yeah, get one. Didn't get one. <laughs> no love. By Kentucky taking care of the ball, Rabbi, only one turnover. Very clean game for them offensively. P.J. Washington mm, off the front of the iron. What do you uh, think about what Jay Williams said there? They play defense this way. They're a national championship contending yeah, yeah, team. Yeah, yeah absolutely. They're, uh, boy, they, they, they fight each other, don't they, on the offensive glass. Kentucky has a mentality. I'm rebounding against the other nine guys on the floor. You know what I'm saying? They're not rebounded against Vanderbilt. They're rebounded against the other four teammates. And man, that's how dominant rebounding teams think. Watch how the blue jerseys are fighting each other for this one. P.J. went up for a dunk. He missed it. And then watch Nick Richards crash. Yeah. And they call the travel on Vanderbilt. Kentucky with their own elbow series. That one's going to be on Nick Richards. That's a dominant defense by, by Kentucky. They, ha they have the link to really push your offense out, disrupt your passing lanes, give you one on the offensive end because they get after those, that defensive glass with a vengeance. Remember, they lost to Duke 118 to 84 in the Champions Classic, and there is nothing at all above this team that resembles that. That resembles no, nothing. That nothing. Reach in on Emmanuel quickly, and that will send Vanderbilt to the line. They will shoot one on one. Speaking of Duke, they get St. John's noon Eastern time as we bring you, Jimmy, a quintuple header. You know what that is? You know how many games that is? Quintuple right now. There's three on the on the graphics. I'm gonna go with three. <laughs> Got to change the page. So what is it? <laughs> it's five. Five. Here you go. Tennessee off that win tonight gets Texas A&M. A&M tomorrow night. ESPN two will host LSU. How about LSU? And then Tennessee, the two toughest teams by record in the conference. And of course, Kentucky would be in that conversation the way they're playing. But LSU has been outstanding all season long, and they get AM tomorrow night. AP top 10, Tennessee back there again. And uh, no letdown against South Carolina tonight. Thought maybe Michigan State off of their loss to Purdue would drop a little further, but Kentucky sits right behind them. Nevada, North Carolina, Marquette round off the top 10. Wow, look at Washington that. show in the left. Now he goes right shoulder with a left paw. I still am bullish. The best two teams, in my estimation, Tennessee Volunteers and the Virginia Cavaliers. Virginia's already gone over 80 points six times this year. Pushed tonight, though, against NC State. There's a meeting at the rim. That a hard foul. Cleveland Brown. Looks like his eye may have gotten poked a little bit. Talked about PJ Washington going left block, left shoulder. Now he's going to go to the right block and a little bit of a face up, up game, but watch at the end. He goes to his right shoulder with that soft left paw. You have to push him off. Six feet and in is money for this kid. At the nine foot mark, that ball starts to miss more than it goes in. P.J.'s got 12, and Brown's first free throw. Rattles around and drops. Understand, when they had Neesmith on the floor, Sheetu on the floor, and Darius Garland, the whole recruiting class for Bryce Drew was really a good class. And you don't want to belabor the point about the Garland loss. Uh, but he's a lottery pick. I mean, he's certainly a first-round pick in the NBA draft. Absolutely. It, it would have been a real tough decision between he and John Moran at Murray State. 
in terms of the next NBA draft, who's the best point guard, and he's going to probably still be a lottery pick. That, that's how good he was in those first four films that we have to judge him by. They completely changed the direction of this Vanderbilt team this year. Ravi, 13 and 5, won the league last year, co champions between Tennessee and Auburn. Right. It won't happen this year. I, I, I think four, it's going to take 14 and 4 to win it. It could make it could take 15 and 3. I'm not sure Tennessee is going to lose more than three or four games. I'm not sure Kentucky's going to get that, that, that either. I know they've got one right now, but I, I don't think the SEC champion this year, regular season, is going to have five losses. And they got two against each other, obviously, home and home. Still to be played as Nick Richards steps in. And Travis goes out. There's, there's no feel right now for Vanderbilt. Like, where's the offense going to come from? Trying to go one on one with Saban Lee and throws it away. I just get sped up. You can't get back in the game going one on one against Ashton Higgins. Ashton Higgins can dominate the ball as an on-ball defender, and you've got to get that ball moving and make Kentucky work and see if they're going to break down. 13 turnovers in a game for Vanderbilt. Jamal Baker, P.J.'s worked on his three-point shot. He buries that. What a half for P.J. Washington tonight. He's got 16. Grab if we look at it, he caught that ball, and without hesitation, it went from the catch spot up into the release spot. And a year ago, he would drop it, I don't know, 10, 12 inches, and it really threw off his rhythm. Not anymore. They're having a lot of fun now, the Wildcats. Their lead jumps to 27. And Vanderbilt just looks beaten. I think that Tennessee game may have taken yeah. more out of them than we even thought. I mean, they were at the magic level that night and did everything they could. It's the best Vanderbilt could play, and it still wasn't good enough. And just wonder the the gas in the tank right now for this team. Cal says, let's set up a play. We got about a three-second differentiation between end of half and shot. What's the play, coach? Probably a sprint-out ball screen for Higgins. Higgins is good enough to just go one-on-one. -on -one. It's going to be a sprint-out ball screen with shooters at the top of the screen. Throwback option. Money. Why not? Yep. 45 in the first half for Kentucky. I say Calipari's had a pretty good game as a head coach, right? When I challenged him at the timeout, <laughs> you got to call a good game. So far, Coach Cal has called a pretty good game. As dominant a performance as we've seen from the Wildcats this season. Let's go to Chris. Coach up by 30 and half. What have you seen from your guys so far? Great defense. Bench play. Um, Jamal and Emmanuel, bench play. Last game, maybe wasn't their game, but we're so happy we won. Those two had a great attitude about it. Now this is their game. That's how this season goes. Keldon wasn't into it. All right, you're not playing as much this game. Um, I want to get Nick going. I'm trying everything I can. He pushes on free throw or on rebounds. We got to get, for us to be special, Nick got to be playing. Got to block shots, but if he doesn't rebound, he got tip dunked on. Can't help you on that. Yeah, I'm you proud go. of the guys, though. Thank you. Whew, a silver lining. I'm proud of them. <laughs> we got an opportunity to play, Nick. We're up by 30. P.J. Washington scored 18 in the first half. Vanderbilt scored 15. G. Halftime Report at NNJ comes up following the commercial break. Welcome back, everyone. ESPN Super Tuesday is presented by Boost Mobile. First half, that guy, P.J. Washington, made seven field goals. Vanderbilt made five as a team. He just keeps getting better, P.J. Washington. P.J., in the end of the game, that's who he should be the whole game. Why aren't you getting 35 and 20? should be talking about him as one of the best players in the country. P.J. Washington, to me, is one of the best players in the country. <laughs> <laughs> and he has been, really, in the last couple of weeks, he's just been dominating. He's a monster, wrapping around that rim, and he, he's shown a little bit of everything tonight. 
his, his ability to knock down long twos, and take a three every now and then, but drives the ball with power, and he's a one-man wrecking crew right now. And again, if P.J. Washington continues to play like this, all it does is just continue to solidify in my mind in years as well that Kentucky has gone from a team in November that we thought they're just not very good this year. They're, they're too young. It's not clicking to they could win the whole thing. Yeah, that was a, That was an un, unreal defensive performance that they put on Vanderbilt in the first half. Yeah, they shot five of 20. P.J. already has a double double and the challenge from Coach Calipari and even himself when he went to some of those NBA camps without uh, committing to the draft what he discovered about himself and the guy who was left there Reed Travis what he discovered about himself and the things that they needed to improve on uh, both are working hard to do that so that they can perform at the next level in the NBA on the other side obviously a brutal first half and let's go to Chris you got a chance to speak with the head coach Bryce Drew well he didn't have a lot of answers they are going to try and start smaller spread things out so they can't compete with the length that Kentucky has around the rim he did say at this point it's just about respect to go out there and fight it's the same thing he said in OU that they're just going to play guys because they need the experience you can't really get that any other way than just trying to go out there even down 30 so they're going to try and change things up but at this point he said I don't have a lot of answers I right. just need more experience and they've lost seven in a row coming into this their longest losing streak since 2014 and 15 the really tough spot for Bryce Drew it's an unforgiving league and he took me in his locker room about three o'clock this afternoon and showed me all the stuff up there that just trying to get his guys to stay focused and determined to to play through things and those are all toughness things that he put up on the wall and I'm sure he talked about it again at halftime but they're, they're just up against the Kentucky team tonight that it, they're really Kentucky's playing as well as anyone in college basketball right now Keldon Johnson believe it or not those are his first points of the game you go through a first half in which Keldon Johnson and Reed Travis throw up two donuts and you're still up by 30 think about that. that that's the power of Kentucky right now and Tennessee can do the same thing they can go with Grant or Admiral not having a great night that's why I'm not as high on Kansas as a lot of people they're too reliant on Dietrich Lawson and you're gonna make a deep run you're gonna have to find a way to win it those three four games in a row to get to the final four right. through foul trouble or somebody not playing well and or Kentucky's doing that right now and it's a loser again tonight. They lost to Texas. This is their worst eight game start since joining the Big 12. They're five and three in conference. And the Udoka Nazabuki injury appears to be a lot more significant to the overall team play than perhaps even what happened. Another turnover for Vanderbilt. The frustration continues. Well, what a change huh? from two and a half three weeks ago when these two, two teams met totally. Kentucky had a season low 56 points and only shot the ball 44 times and now they go on the road and just completely flip it getting anything they want what an efficient first half for Kentucky they had 34 possessions had 11 assists only one turnover in the opening 20 minutes for Big Blue another telling statistic from that first game Vanderbilt led 16 to 4. They had 16 points in the first five minutes. They just got their 16th point, and we're a minute into the second half. This is the 2-3 zone that really bothered Kentucky in Rupp Arena. And Hagans will move off of that point guard spot. And that's when they're better in their offensive zone sets right now. Poor pass by two in blue that time. Higgins has been turned over now, Ravi, about four, five times a game over the last two or three. I know he's had eight assists, but at times a little careless with that basketball. Why do you think Coach Cal is so insistent, given they were up by 30, and to single out, we need Nick if we want to be special in a half in which they were as special as they've been. Why, why the emphasis on Richards? What does he mean to this group? Because he gives them something that no one else does, Ravi. He can he can really guard the paint. And he can really protect the rim and he has terrific recovery length and recovery speed when somebody gets beat and that energy level and that seven foot four wingspan that he plays with is something that Kentucky doesn't have and Kentucky moves that ball Higgins is 
again, so good at getting separation from, from shooters and, and coming one way and throwing back to shooters. Johnson and Hero are the primary targets. Johnson had some big threes at the end of that Kansas game, didn't he? Oh. He's, uh, you know, it's, it's really amazing, like you said, for him to not even show up in the first half. And Kentucky up third. stay with Kentucky. How about the uh, battle that they all face trying to get better individually, which is the goal, and that's why Travis is here. I want to be better. I want to be in the pros. Washington, all these guys have pro aspirations, and you combine that with the goal of the team, which is clearly to get better. Sometimes the numbers won't be there, right, that you'd like to see there. Like, a, you get a lot of people in your ear, hey, you didn't get 25 tonight. We really need you to do that. We want to get, get drafted higher. Greg, I, I coached at Kentucky for two years with Eddie Sutton. That maybe is the most difficult thing as a coach of Kentucky to avoid the noise and for your players to avoid the noise. Because they are bigger than life in Lexington in the, in the Bluegrass State. That's a, as passionate of a fan base as there is. But you have to avoid the noise and listen to one voice, and that one voice is Cal. And there's that really groove three-point shot by P.J. Washington that when that thing starts going down at a high clip like it has, he now becomes a valuable asset to some NBA team because he can stretch the floor and just he, he touches the game in so many areas. Yeah. And in your coaching experience, did you have, have somebody where you, as a coach, saw the light go off where it feels like P.J. is recognizing this light's going off, like I actually can be a dominant player. I mean, you're just witnessing sort of a blossoming, further blossoming of K, uh, for P.J. I, I go back to when I was assistant coach of Kentucky, Rex Chapman as a freshman. Sure. You know, it took him about five or six games. I remember having the conversation with him in, in, in coach's office one day and said, listen, you, you're a difference maker. The, the, you, you play the game a different way than anyone else we have, and we're freeing you up to do it. And uh, boy, Rex at that point just kind of took off. And I see a lot of Rex Chapman and Tyler Hero in terms of the bounce and the, and the swagger and the, and, and the, and the dog competitor that, that this kid is. He is, to me, the... The guy that you have to keep an eye on for Kentucky going forward as they chase Tennessee right now. It, I, I feel pretty good about what Kentucky can get from those other spots. This hero kid, though, is a difference maker for Kentucky because of that ability to jump up and knock down threes if it goes in at a 40% clip. Look, I love Tyler Hero, but in our little game of shirts and skins, uh, my dude tonight has got, <laughs> got 21 and 10. <laughs> He's his team's staying on the floor. <laughs> Because of it, just a little bit late. And you're chasing the shooter, Ravi. Let the shooter determine your path. You don't choose your own path. Just get on his numbers and follow his steps. And Hero got off that path and got clipped. He's so quick. You saw that quick move. The Wisconsin high school star who scored over 40 in high school eight times. Shot 40% from three in high school. He's worked a heck of a lot on his defense here. I love what he told us earlier today. The wind chill is his, his hometown tonight is going to be like minus 58. School got canceled up there because of how cold it is. That's crazy what's going on up there. Everything should be canceled. <laughs> yes. Let's just cancel everything. <laughs> The, the, the drive and the slot by BJ, but I go back to that deep corner three. Watch this. Boom. In and out of the hands. Doesn't drop it. Nice rotation. Nice release. Nice result for BJ Washington. And Tyler Hero, the, the quickness, the sidestep into his jump shot, gets his feet balanced. Very well done. 14 and blue. For Kentucky. And Kentucky at times. You, just you got like a man crush on Hero. I, I, well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I'll go that far or not, but <laughs> I, I think he's a, a huge guy because Kentucky, if they get in a game where the ball's not going in, he's got to hit those 38, 40% three-point like the stroke looks like. And, right. But he does so many other things. He's, he's, a, he's a gambler defensively. He makes plays on both ends. 
He drives and finishes. He's got the pull-ups. He's got that swagger I now. That swagger. Uh, yes, yeah. absolutely. Washington's free throw gives him 23 points on the night. And they've now subbed all five out. Montgomery on the floor. Hagens, Baker, Nick Richards is in. Emmanuel quickly as well. Right, when I look at talent across the country right now and the coaches that are attached to that talent, and if they're going to be tested, I, I think we're down to seven teams that could win the whole thing. Two of them out of the ACC, Duke and Virginia. I believe there's two out of the SEC, Tennessee and Kentucky. I believe Michigan and Michigan State out of the Big Ten, and I think Gonzaga out yeah. west is the seventh team. I think your national champion is going to come from one of those seven ball clubs. Those teams have got future pros. They're tested. They're tough. They're getting it done. Offensive and defensive efficiency numbers are well. I think a lot of times you can say that at the beginning of the season as quickly gets fouled and he flexes on the ground. A lot of times you can say that at the beginning of the season. After watching that Duke-Kentucky game, I think a lot of people wouldn't have yet put no. him in even if they were to improve. The improvement has been so rapid this season and you can just see the depth that they have. Yeah, this is a kid uh, quickly that John Calipari says, if you shot fake tonight, you're coming out of the game. I want you shooting the ball. And that time he read his defender well. And Took a hard hit at the at the rim. Kentucky has won the collisions at the rim in this ball game. Freshman guard grew up playing the saxophone, the piano, the drums, and obviously a lot of basketball. You an instrument guy growing up? Uh, yeah, a little bit. You know, I, I lived in Nashville for about nine months trying to make it as a country singer one time. I no way. Story. Yes, I did. It didn't go too well because I'm sitting here by you, but. Actually wrote songs and wait a minute. Yes. You, we we got to get some of these. You have any? <laughs> yeah. we, so you have? No, we don't have to. Oh yeah, we got to get <laughs> some <laughs> lyric like a love. Yes. Were you a love song guy? Like what kind of? Give me. No, I wasn't a love song guy. I was single at the time. I was just trying to make it. So give me I, some I, lyrics. I was give me a, a, I, give rock, me a lyric. Rockin' little heartbeat. I wrote a, I wrote a song with a guy that's had a lot of number one hits. We wrote a song called Rockin' Little Heartbeat. Ne never quite made it on the charts, but yeah, got a rockin' little heartbeat. See, we're learning. That's tremendous. Yeah, more than we need to know right now, but it, it no, is 60 wait a minute. 28. It is six. So you, <laughs> so nine, nine months, and you said no, and we're out. Yeah, pretty much. I was scouting in the NBA at the time. Right. So during the off season, I was over here, and uh, obviously the, it didn't work out that well. I, I loved it. What, what a terrific town this is. Oh. Got to meet a lot of the stars at the time. One of, one of the great opens of all time occurred. 11 years ago, Vince Gill and I at Ryman Auditorium doing an open for a SEC Tuesday night, Super Tuesday game. Now, was it, because obviously you're in Nashville here, and wherever you look, you're probably looking at an aspiring musician. Yes. Did you recognize at that point that what certain people had was a little different than what you had? Yeah, I, I will tell you this. Th this town is loaded, loaded with talent. I mean, they're, they're playing everywhere, just just waiting for a break, waiting for the waiting for the hit song to get handed to them, waiting for a record deal. But it is loaded with talent. Is this is this right? No, that's no. The no, Rock a Little Heartbeat had a had a faster. How, how did we get on this? How did we get on this? Uh, we didn't. Kentucky brought us here at 62-29. <laughs> but are you kidding? I didn't know. Well, I'll, tell you, I'll, I'll tell you more. Okay. I'll sure tell you, you more will. later. Yeah. Well, we got 13 minutes and 30 seconds. <laughs> Good for you for trying. I'm going to get a whole lot there. <laughs> well, Kentucky, they, they've really grown up defensively just watching them. Sit in those gaps, they open up, they keep vision of the ball. They're, they play with really big, active hands when they're guarding the ball. They get on the white line, and like Cal said, they still probably have 25 30 percent improvement when you break down their film defensively. It's a lot of growth still ahead of them. Jordan Bowden didn't play tonight for Tennessee, tweaked his knee at some point when you're in a game like this. Big picture is you got to make sure everybody stays on the floor, right? I mean, you yes. got to guard against that. Tough shot from the baseline from Lee Smith. Shit to blocked by Nick Richards. Here's your answer to why, why Calipari needs Nick Richards to be that 12, 15 minutes a game guy. Keep it up. Keep it up. Keep it up. 
circle series for Tyler Hero to work off of those baseline screens. Hero's going to have to launch this one with three on the shot clock. We'll get a foul. So Nick Richards goes up and blocks that. And obviously, he's got tremendous height. But that right paw there, I want to show you something, Jimmy. <laughs> That's your hand. That's that my hand is. and Nick wow. Richards' hand. It's twice as big as your hand. One of those hands looks normal. <laughs> I mean, the other one looks like E.T. Did you see how big oh his my hand gosh. was? How many shots did you block as a player? Oh, not, not enough. Not enough. Did I tell you I was once trying to make it as a country singer? <laughs> Never I, as an I, NBA or college basketball player. I told you I would shock you more than I did in the first half. <laughs> you succeeded. The there you go. We got there. Dominant performance by Kentucky. Brad, when you, when you can protect the rim with size off the bench like Kentucky does, and then you can light up the point of attack like Hagens does and be a disruptive defender, those other three guys can just kind of lock in and do what they're supposed to do. Penetration there. And, uh, Good penetration led to a layup for Vanderbilt. It's as if the uh, rest of the second half, they're going to let P.J. or Reed Travis sit. They're both sitting here, ready to go into the game. There you go. E.J. Montgomery gets on the board, and the Big Blue Nation enjoys that. Well, maybe not. P.J. Washington has been sent back to the bench. Maybe it was that rebound and bucket by E.J. Montgomery. Right. Said, you know what? Let's let's let yeah, this go yeah, a little bit. Let, let him get going. Our hero so good anticipating. They got trailers too. Instead, he goes Euro step and lays it up and lays it in. There's a high level play by Hero as an off-ball defender to stay open up in his stance and keep vision of where the pass is going to come from. He's another really long, I mean, he's a legit 6'5", long wingspan defender that is constant energy level. What you recognize about Hero, too, he is one of those. There's another block that time Montgomery, and Richards is there after the foul called. He misses a shot. He's going to keep shooting. Break it down. What do we got? I'm not, I'm not sure. Well, that, is Sing that, it. Is that Sing it. Bentley? It's Dykes. <laughs> Climbing the charts like Kentucky. Exactly. In Nashville. How about Alabama, huh? Last year, obviously, Sexton carried them in that SEC tournament. Right now, putting it to Mississippi State. Back here, 66 31. If you're just flipping over, it was 45 15 at the half. In favor of Kentucky, and nothing has changed here in the second half except the discovery of aspiring country music star Jimmy <laughs> Dykes. I love that, and I am really, really uh, proud and happy for you that yeah. you did that, that you tried that. That's amazing. That's <laughs> tremendous. The whole truck is working hard out there right now. <laughs> I can't believe this. This is tremendous. Seriously. This is it. This is the song. They found the song. <laughs> I can't believe they know that song. This is, keep going. This is, just listen. So you wrote this and this is you singing? Yes. This is so good. It's better than us. I'm not, I'm not talking. Come on, brother. Give it to us. You're in Nashville. I wrote it, sang it, recorded it. This is great. Yeah, it's we're good. good. There's about good. two hours. <laughs> oh, wow. Can we go on tour with me, Ravi? I absolutely will. That was tremendous. Be my stage manager. <laughs> yes. I haven't, I seriously have not heard that song in probably 10 years. Well done by somebody out there. I thought it was really good. It sounded really good. That's no, great. It no, of course it, it did. It sounded okay. Come on, man. Sounded that sounded okay. really good. That's not easy. Ask about half the people in this place right now. That's not easy. Good on you. Wow. 
Okay, 68-31. <laughs> Where were we? <laughs> Back into Jimmy Dykes coach mode. I did not wake up this morning <laughs> thinking Rockin' Little Heartbeat's gonna be played on national TV. I can tell you that much. <laughs> beauty, that's the beauty of it. Talk about Alabama, either Saturday for Alabama against Auburn. Auburn's a team that fallen out of the top 25, but they can get hot and start knocking down shots, and all of a sudden you look up and they're in that Sweet 16 Elite Eight type game as well. Sports Center, John Anderson, Michael Leaves, they follow us. They'll have an inside look at Harden's historic run with the Rockets. More on the Anthony Davis saga with the Pelicans. Highlights from College Hoops top games and the latest from the Pats and the Rams. Sports Center next right here on ESPN on the ESPN app. Of course, Anthony Davis played in Kentucky, so I did ask Coach Cal, what's up with AD? What's the end game here? Is it a Laker thing? What's the play? And uh, I assume he was telling the truth. He said he does text with Davis a lot, but he wasn't yeah. quite sure what this... You know, other than leaving New Orleans and not having a chance to compete for a championship was about. He didn't give any insight or shed any light on this is a Laker play or or something else. Well, they've had seven years to put a team around him to, yeah. to be a title contender. How about Scott Drew, the coach at Baylor, Rice's brother, just sent me a text that that is really impressive. I will buy the record. Rocking little heartbeat. So we, we, we sold one. So far, we've sold one. To sell more records than uh, views we had from our Tuesday <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> How about Scott Drew's team at Baylor? They lose the Clark kid and just, man, they're smoking they people right now. Yep. Yes, they are. There's Homer, Homer Drew. Drew. Yeah. He came down to us last Wednesday after the game and said, that, that that's as good as we can play. And, and, and they had Tennessee there. They just couldn't finish it off. You do have to wonder, given what Kansas is doing and the injury they sustained, if this is the year that the streak of winning conference titles ends. Yeah, if you're in the Big 12, this this has to be the year that you get it done. This is not a typical Kansas team at all. They're injured, they're banged up, they're relying on one guy. And, you know, Iowa State maybe could do it. I thought Kansas State really went to A&M and just completely disinterested in the Big 12 SEC challenge. What a difference a week makes when we had all the orange here last week with Tennessee. That one did cross the half court line. We had all the orange here and the crowd on both sides was so into it. Even tonight given the score you know what you see from Big Blue Nation and certainly the black and gold very quiet. A lot of black and gold seats you can see now behind the mm -hmm. baskets. But last week this place was on fire. Just a bad luck has come across Bryce Drew. They, they go the NCAA turn his first year. Did a terrific job of changing his offense about halfway through that season. And the Garland kid, I'm telling you, I, 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 I think Vanderbilt would be like right there is maybe a couple, three losses in the league right now. Probably have their own 12, 13 wins and fight for an NCAA tournament appearance in year three. But that Garland kid was a he was a difference maker. Saban Lee's not a point guard. He's having to play that position. Garland made everything click. You go back and watch the first four games that Vanderbilt had with him on the floor. They were the real deal in so many areas. It's amazing what the loss of one kid can do to a season, and it has done that for Vanderbilt this year. Yeah, it has. You see him at the next level in the NBA. So Rex Chapman says. I won't buy Rockin' Little Heartbeat, but we'd love a live performance here at Rook when you're in town next. <laughs> and what else does it say? What else? Uh, that's so awesome, That's bro. it. That's it's so cool. awesome. No, See, I'm telling you, your man. Friends, your friends speak up on things like that. It's because your friends all wish that they had <laughs> the ability to do that. Keep texting. We'll keep reading. <laughs> well, Higgins is so good in and out of his step back. That's a pro step back move by a kid that should be in high school. How oh, cute. Keep texting. How we'll long is reading. this thing going to last? <laughs> <laughs>
you're impressed with his game as well tonight, right? I am, but Calipari wanted to change a little bit of his game. He wanted to play him a little more quicker. He had some perimeter shooting. It's also some of the feedback he got from the NBA scouts. But in order to do that, he had to drop some weight. So since he left Stanford, he was 260. He's now 235. Here's how he did it. Every morning he'd wake up. First thing he'd do, he'd get on the treadmill. He wanted to work up that metabolism before you even ate breakfast. Do a little anti-gravity work on the treadmill. Fewer weights. He's also really strict about his diet. So in the mornings, egg whites and oatmeal. And then for lunch and dinner, it's like a salmon and broccoli mix. Which I have to say, the, the egg whites is a stark contrast from the double order of French toast. Sorry, kids' French toast. Wait, what? That Ravi had Wait, what? for breakfast. <laughs> yes, a double order of kids' French toast. That's what you ordered this morning. I was a little confused as to what, the what were you thinking. Adult order was versus kids. It, it turned out to be two little squares, but boy, they were delicious. You broke the rules. It said for 12 and under only, please. <laughs> Yeah. What part of for kids didn't you understand? Kid at heart that didn't count? No. I, I, I really like Neesmith. I, I know the game's completely out of hand in, in a number of different areas. But Neesmith, for a muscled up freshman, just shoots a really good ball. You know, he works his tail off every day. He's a really good building piece going forward. PJ Washington wow. fires another three. I'll tell you, during Chris's story, which was terrific insight into Reed Travis, and then she digressed into just tearing me about the biscuits and French toast. You saw on the baseline, Nick Richards made a little jump hook with his right hand. We'll show you Coach Cal's reaction to that. I mean, it literally was as if he had seen something that he's been waiting to see all season long. His, his reaction to the little Nick Richards baseline jump hook was indicative of how badly he wants Nick to perform for this team. Nick, Nick Richards could be the difference of Kentucky winning two or three games and not winning two or three games over the next seven or eight weeks. And it's an unblockable shot, and it's, there's no real hesitation. He felt the double team on the high shoulder, so he goes low shoulder, and watch Cal. That's it. Like, yeah, that like, is like, a great really? reaction. Yes, it's what he wants. Catch it, shoot with confidence. Because he looks really good in drills every day when yeah. I'm in the craft center watching him shoot that shot over and over and over. I think John Calipari should be in the conversation for coach of the year. From where yeah, they were, I, I do. Where they were, what, where he's brought them. Yeah, I think this is a similar conversation that we had in baseball with manager of the year. Um, there seems to be this because your team is talented, you you sort of get discredited as a manager. Alex Cora, I thought, should have been the manager of the year. Okay, with the Red Sox, won a hundred and some odd games, the World Series never never trailed in the American League East, and yet he didn't win the manager of the year because, well, the payroll was high, the team was good, and they had just hired him to be the first-year manager. Okay. Won a World Series. But no, because of the talent on the team and the payroll, he's not going to get considered. In the case of Cal, isn't that the same deal? Same Too deal. much talent. How can he be the coach of the year when you see what's happened here in, in a month, how quickly this team has come? I am on board with what you say I agree that he certainly should be in that conversation and I know there's a lot of people out there who are listening to saying what are you crazy anybody can coach that team wrong I'll ask you about that in a minute UConn and Louisville speaking of great coaches two of them in this game and the Hall of Famer Gino Oriema seven o'clock Eastern time the Huskies have been terrific they've won 17 in a row against the cards dating back to 1993 Durr back and playing really well and See Miss Samuelson shoot from the outside. Both of them shooting over 35% from three. But yeah, is that a fact? Like, hey, can anybody coach Duke? Can anybody coach Carolina, Kentucky, Michigan State? What makes them so special? They have the best players. Well, first of all, can you recruit them and get them on your campus? Let's start with that. So that has to factor in and how good of a coach you are. Rav, do you understand how hard it is to take guys? and put them together for a short period of time. One first-year players, freshman, a kid that should be a senior in high school right now. 
and, and, and to put this thing together. It took them a while to regroup after the after the after the Duke lost. Yeah. This guy just refused to say anything other than we can still get there. Magnificent job. How good are the two games between Kentucky and Tennessee? Right now, how good oh, do they wow. look? Monster matchups, you know. I'm, I'm glad they play each other home and home this year. Yeah. They're, they're built similar. They're very physical. They give you nothing in the paint, and they get the ball to the paint regardless of what you do defensively. That ball is going to get a paint touch about two out of every three possessions. Look out, he got met there by Wetzel. And they look at each other briefly. We'll take a timeout. Less than four to go. All Kentucky here in Music City, 77-43. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Boost Mobile. Boost makes it easy to switch. Switching makes it easy to save. Welcome back. P.J. Washington, the dominant performer tonight, other than Jimmy and his music rendition. But on the floor, P.J.'s been the difference maker. He has. He shot a really nice ball from the three-point line a couple of times in this game. And that's about as good of a rotation that you'll see on a three-point jump shot from the college level. And he's a monster on that left block, left shoulder. He gave you some right shoulder stuff and finished with a left paw as well. He's a downhill driver. Doesn't drive to assist as much as drive to score. And look what this big cat's done now. The last three games against Mississippi State, Auburn, and, and uh, yeah. tonight, well, in terms of flipping the switch, the Kansas numbers aren't in there. Right. But. That's brought to you by Boost Mobile. Consider, too, last year that uh, P.J. was not an outside shooting threat. In fact, last year, P.J. Washington's attempted, attempted 21 threes. He's up over 40 attempts this year, and he's obviously making them at a much higher percentage. So when you think about next level, what do we need to do to get there? Obviously, outside shooting for a guy that size, he's going to have to be able to shoot from the outside. Yes, you have to uh, you have to be able to stretch the floor from your position. You have to be able to guard multiple positions, which I think you can with, with PG. You can slide him up or slide him down at times. Uh, I, I think he gets it. That's a big thing with NBA scouts. I talked about it during the Texas Tech game on Saturday about Jarrett Culver. Guys that get it in terms of embracing a role and high character working their tails off and pj probably needs to go another level there at times but the tremendous upside with this kid credit nick richards with another block he and wetzel battling underneath another chance for a block he came down with his arm that time and that generally ends up in a foul being called, and it was on Nick Richards. All right, Sonic Blockbuster, take a look at what uh, the Kansas-Kentucky result was for Washington, Reed, Travis, and Keldon Johnson. They all went for double-doubles. At, at the bottom, Ravi, points in the paint, Kentucky almost plus 20. And they just, they, they punked Kansas around the rim during that ball game. Kansas is really good. I'm not saying that they can't get to the Final Four, but... This is a Kentucky team that has grown up in a hurry. And John Calipari is, he's coaching his tail off. I, I think he would say now that he no longer has to drag his team across the finish line Remember of that? games. Right. Yes. And it wasn't that long ago that he was saying it, and he was having to drag it. But this team now has embraced each other. They're, they're, they're self-coaching themselves. I thought they asked good questions today, and their shoot around, their walk through. I know where they're ranked right now, seventh in the country, but... They're playing as well as anybody in college ball, Tennessee, Virginia included in that conversation. Richards, oh, he almost had that emphatic dunk on the alley-oop. Sean Farnham chimes in, called it TV gold. <laughs> and now, as you're trending on Twitter, is there anything Jimmy Dykes can't do? Forget the victory cigar. <laughs> the game is over when you hear a Jimmy Dykes song. Hey, if, if I'm not available next Tuesday with you in Lexington, it's because I'm the opening act for, I, I don't know, SEC somebody. tournament. Dykes will appear. Let's set it up. 
We have to. Let's get a band here. Yes. It won't take them 15 minutes to learn that song, as, as good as they are here. Make it a fundraiser for something. Rockin' Little Heart has never had the exposure. Ever. No, no, never. Tonight. That, that is a true statement. It, it's, it's, yeah, our producer says it's actually pretty good. <laughs> that is in a shocking statement. In a shocking statement. <laughs> we, we have shocked each other more than we ever thought tonight. <laughs> Coming in. <laughs> <laughs> I got to go to dinner at Reba McIntyre's house one night. This was during this yes, period, during this of, time period of time in your life? period of time in my life. It's a, a wonderful, wonderful, gracious lady. and um, Faith Hill, got to watch her at her. They, they, they have parties over here when a new artist is coming out and they have a kind of a coming out party for them. They get to sing a couple of songs. I was there that, that night to watch Faith wow. Hill kind of break through. And did, 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 was there ever any... Uh, a representation, any agent, any any label? No, no there was n none of the above. I, I was hooked up with one of, the, one of the strongest record producers and songwriters at the time, a guy named Mark Wright. And people in Nashville know, yeah, I know Mark Wright. He's produced a lot of albums going back to Clint Black and, and even and Randy even Hauser. He, and he couldn't get it on the charts. Ah, we, mm. You know, we actually, that, that song, Tracy Bird, I don't know if you know Tracy Bird, but there was some talk about him wanting to put it on an album, and I said, no, let's, let's, let's make it our own number one hit. And right. It, it just took us 20 years to get it there. It's the number one hit right now. I bet it is. No <laughs> doubt it is. Fastball right through the uh, glove of the catcher, Wetzel. He couldn't hold on to it. Speaking of fastballs, didn't Vanderbilt's baseball team's ranked number one preseason, right? Now, baseball America has them number one in the preseason. Of course, their great coach, Tim Corbin. Kentucky just redid their entire baseball facility. It's fantastic. SEC as a conference. Obviously, we've seen what Florida has done recently, but boy, that is a power conference. Mm -hmm. Arkansas nearly won the whole thing last year. Foul ball catch away from winning it. Yeah, heartbreak yeah. city there for the Razorbacks, but they'll be back. The SEC is, is obviously loaded when it comes to all sports, but baseball in particular, they are. That SEC tournament Hoover, Alabama is as good a spectacle for baseball as you can see. Ravi, I, I still believe, and Calipari is the, the one that says it, and he's the one that counts, but this is his best three-point shooting team. Maybe the numbers so far haven't backed it up, but they've got multiple guys that shoot a really good ball. Keldon Johnson, Baker, quickly, Hero, uh, P.J. Washington right now. Reed Travis can make a deep corner three. So it's going to be very difficult to zone them, and now he moves Hagen off the point against zone to be a playmaker. There's their upcoming schedule. LSU, Kentucky, February 12th, and then the Saturday game. That's a that's a tough little back-to-backer. LSU, and then at Tennessee, February 16th. LSU is loaded. I'm telling you, they walk onto the court with that purple and gold. You think it's the Lakers coming in? They've got size. They've got depth. They're young, but man, when they get it rolling, the comeback they had at Missouri the other night was phenomenal. Down 14 with under two minutes two to go. Minutes to go. Yes. Water's great. May's terrific in overtime. That's a Super Tuesday game. LSU and Kentucky. The athletes on LSU. I know there's not a lot of teams that can compete with Kentucky athletically. LSU can. Woo. They are right there. They are right there with them. And it took Tremont Waters about a month to figure out how to play with really good players around him. And now that he has, he's. Now he gets his three steals a game, kind of like this Hagen's kid does from Kentucky. Watch out for LSU going forward. I've had a number of coaches comment on Will Wade, saying that guy has got great sets. He can coach. Big win for Alabama tonight. They knock off the Mississippi State squad. And that Alabama-Auburn game on Saturday, That the jungle will be lively for Bruce Pearl and the Auburn Tiger. There you go, Nick. What a pass, huh? 6'11 to 6'11. Well big, done. Big hands on a big, great big pass. Big hands <laughs> Give him the guitar. Let's see what he can play. No, you can't play. Not, you got to have a huge guitar with hands that size. What a performance by Big Blue tonight in Nashville. They were dominant in every area. A very clean game. How many turnovers did Kentucky have tonight, Ravi? Not, not very many. It's single digits, right, J.D.? Seven. That's, yeah. Very clean game. 52 points, shooting percentage, obviously really bad for Vanderbilt. Throw it up again, Nick at night. 
<laughs> Ravi, I want you to remember the number one team in the country came in here last week, had to go to overtime. What are you saying? You better watch out for Kentucky. Kentucky's better than seventh in the country? I believe they are. I sure do. Wow. Checked all the boxes tonight. And so did Kentucky and Coach John Calipari. 87-52, <laughs> our final score. Come on, we gotta go to Tootsie's. I'm on in 30 minutes. I love it. <laughs> Dykes breaks out, Richards breaks out, Kentucky rolls for Jimmy Dykes, our entire crew. Great job finding that song in the truck as well. I'm Carl Ravage. It's time for SportsCenter.